Good evening, everyone. Uh, good that you could join us for the final installment in our series, Sex for Sale. Today, we're dealing with handling your desires. How do you handle desires in a world that is so confusing and circumstances that are difficult to manage? How do you deal with the urge and impulses that want to lead you one way or the other? And how do you make the right decisions that you are supposed to make? How do you deal with the pressure to fulfill a desire and an urge that you know is not right for you? Many of the desires that we have are legitimate desires. For instance, the desire to have sex in itself is not illegitimate. God gave us sexual desires along with the right parameters for realizing them. So desires in themselves are not bad. They are God-given. There are a number of different worldviews on how to handle your desires. Take Buddhists, for instance. They believe that if a person can extinguish the desire that they have, they would be able to eliminate the tension and frustration that comes from unfulfilled desires. In other words, you should detach yourself from desires that may result in unmet needs and wants. Then you have the hedonist philosophy that believes that seeking pleasure and avoiding suffering are the only two components of well-being. If you don't like any of these philosophies because they do not guarantee anything, uh, there is no joy, no trust, no community, no relationship, there is no integrity, no goodwill, and no forgiveness at the end of the day, it's all an empty bag. Then look to the Bible. While the Buddhist says that you should extinguish your desires, and the hedonist says that you should satisfy all of your desires, the Bible teaches that you should order your desires. Desires, as I said earlier, are not bad. They just need to be ordered. They need to be prioritized and sequenced according to the word of God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 tells us, to seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And those things, or the things that we desire, shall then be added to us. In James chapter 1, verse 13, the Bible also teaches that there is a sequence to sin. Sin doesn't just happen. There is a progression from temptation to consideration, from consideration to contemplation to action. Then there is the no going back situation. An evil desire is a desire that seeks to overthrow its position and come before its place in the order of things. For instance, if you have a desire as number three, but that desire forces itself into a position of number one, that's an evil desire. It's not the desire that's wrong, it is the position. The desire to have sex is not wrong. But when you try to have it before marriage or outside of your marriage, you have overthrown the order, and that's when it becomes an evil desire. The devil creates the impression that violating the order is not wrong, but God says happiness awaits you at the end of the right sequence of things. We fall into temptation only because we refuse to order our desires. Do not try to make a decision on what is right or what is wrong in the middle of a temptation. If you take time prior to establish healthy desires, they will help you set boundaries. The question then is, how do you set boundaries? Your values, your ideals, the things that matter most to you, your moral code, they are the things that help you set boundaries. If you have them written down and internalized, by the time you get into temptation, you already know what to do. So do not wait to get into temptation before you practice your values. Rather, weave them into everyday thoughts and action. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, that we should not let Satan take advantage of us because we are not ignorant of his devices. So you see, you are the one who creates an advantage for Satan. 
And one of the ways that we can deny him of any advantage is by setting sexual desires right. Occupy yourself with other important things other than fixating on illicit sex, and God will help you to prioritize your desires and your decisions. In addition to all the other antidotes that I've offered and we have shared together over the last three weeks, let me again reiterate one or two admonitions from the Bible to guide you. Number one, avoid exclusive privacy with the opposite sex. The Bible says flee. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, from the New Living Translation says, run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the company of those who call on God with a pure heart. This text says to avoid anything that stimulates wrong desires. It could be music, movies, friends and other people, or even environment. These things can trigger you know, wrong designs. Jesus says if your hand causes you to sin, that you should cut it off. And if your eye causes you to sin, that you should gouge it out. The power of sexual sin, whether it's adultery or fornication, is privacy. So don't rationalize, don't contemplate, just shut it down and run for your dear life. Number two, engage your spiritual weapons. Pray and fast. Lean on the grace of God and ask him for help. The Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 13, is any one of you in trouble? Let him pray. And if you're of age and ready, and have a partner, get married. The Bible says it's better to marry than born. Don't wait for your so-called ideal situation or perfect condition. Take your decision and go ahead trusting God. I hope you have a great time with this series, and I would like to recommend that you listen to some of these you know, uh, recordings over and over again, just so that they would be bond into your heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. Do have a great time this evening and see you again next week. God bless you.